Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to a double weekly wrap up of two weeks worth of reading. I didn't do one of these last week because I have been reading a lot of the Hugo and Nebula award winners. I need to read 10 of them per month and I'm just going for it right now. Um, I didn't have enough non-winners to talk about last week to really justify doing a weekly wrap-up. I am intending on doing separate reviews or little wrap-ups of the Hugo and Nebula award-winning stuff, so yeah, my video making schedule thing just got really messed up because of this project, but I'm going with it. <laughs> it's exciting. But I read nine things in the past two weeks, and I'm going to mention them all here and then do my usual overview of the ones that I'm not doing separate videos on. The first three are The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick, A Time of Changes by Robert Silverberg, and Stand on Zanzibar by John Brunner. These are Hugo and Nebula award winners, and I disliked all of them to varying degrees. I'm going to do a quickie kind of wrap up of just those three books because I don't really want to rant about them for super long, but I just want to get them over with. <laughs> They're sort of hanging over my head. I didn't enjoy them very much. So a separate video is coming on those three. I also read Slow River by Nicola Griffith, a Nebula Award winner, and I really loved this one so much that I'm going to be doing a separate review video on it. The other award winner I read is The Big Time by Fritz Leiber. This is a Hugo Award winner? I can't keep them straight now. I'm reading so many of them. Um, I just finished this yesterday. I didn't really like it. Um, it was interesting because it was staged like a play, but boring discussion. I wasn't really into the idea of soldiers from a time war showing up at what's basically an entertainment brothel, and then there's an atomic bomb. I didn't under I didn't get the point. What is the point of this book? Anyway, I will talk about it in more detail when I do my big wrap up at the end of the month of the award winners. No, I lied. I read another award winner, Red Mars by Kim Stanley Robinson. Can you tell I'm getting confused? I'm just Oh my god. Um <laughs> I'm not going to edit this out. I, I'm not going to edit this out. Uh, this is a hard science fiction novel. It's the first in a trilogy about the colonization and terraforming of Mars, I believe over a couple of centuries. This first book was awesome. I loved this book very, very much. I cannot wait to get Green Mars. I have to read Green Mars and Blue Mars, the last two books, because they're Hugo Award winners. And I will either talk about it in detail in my wrap up at the end of the month or may do an overview of the entire series because I'm going to be reading the series a lot faster than I thought I was going to. We'll see how I feel, but mostly right now I'm just super ecstatic about it. That means I've read six of these award winners in October so far and I need to read four more before the end of the month to stay on track, which is super doable. Okay, now I'm going to finally talk about some things in detail. <laughs> Monstrous Volume 1 by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. This is a fantasy steampunk kind of Asian inspired comic series. It's gorgeous. I mean, the artwork is just fantastic. It's so, so beautiful. This is the kind of artwork that I really, really like because it's detailed. It's realistic in some some ways, and it reminds me of reading manga when I was a teenager. I think that the artist Takeda might be a manga artist. This series is about a war between humans and Arcanics. Arcanics are like god or demon human hybrids. The main character, Micah, is an Arcanic, and she, in this first volume, is trying to infiltrate a human witch compound to find something out. She's trying to discover what happened to her mother or what her mother was working on and what happened to her when she was a child. She has a secret. There is something like inside of her. She doesn't know what it is. She can't really control it. It's pretty terrifying. And she goes to this place to discover answers and it gets super violent and out of control and she picks up some friends who she's not very friendly to, and it's difficult to describe what's going on in this because I think the only negative thing I have to say about this first volume is that it is 
so lush and gorgeous. It's focusing on the world building, on these beautiful scenes, but not enough on explaining what the story is going to be. There are also a lot of really cool highlights in this. There's a cat character that I adore. I hope the cat survives because I want more of the cat. The main character, in fact most of the characters, are Asian. It's just definitely oriental. They're not white. And the main character has a disability. She's missing the lower half of one of her arms, which I have never seen in a comic before. It's pretty cool. So there are so many reasons why I would recommend this. It's beautiful. I think the story is going to be good. The characters are interesting and diverse. And it's by, I think, a mostly all-female team of creators. I read another comic, Lumberjanes Volume 4, Out of Time. This one is written by Noelle Stevenson and Shannon Waters and illustrated by Brooke Allen, which I believe is the original team and the original artist. I continue to love Lumberjanes. It's about a group of girls at a very strange summer camp camp where they spend way more time fighting off mysterious beasts from the forest than actually earning their badges. And in this one, a freak blizzard hits camp and more adventures ensue. It's just so madcap and weird and very little of it makes sense. Though I do think in this volume there's more of a continuous story throughout it, which was very interesting. It felt a little bit toned down from the craziness and just all over the place of previous volumes, and I really enjoyed that. But it still has that spark and charm and craziness, so I really enjoy this. It's just brain candy. And the final thing I have to talk about is A Night in the Lonesome October by Roger Zelazny. Um, this is about a cast of characters, man. Um, it's a group of famous characters from literature and their familiars, um, including Jack the Ripper, whose dog is the main character and the narrator, and Sherlock Holmes makes an appearance. All of these people are showing up in the days leading up to Halloween and a full moon, I believe. They are going to participate in a ritual to either open or close the gateway for, like, terrible beasts to enter the world. And so they're all plotting and scheming and figuring out who they can trust and who they want to thwart. And it's really funny. <laughs> It's all of the human characters are mostly left out of it. It's just the animal familiars. So Jack the Ripper's dog, a witch's cat, so you have a dog and a cat kind of teaming up, a bat, a squirrel, a snake. Uh, it's just Oh, it was so entertaining. I wanted to like read one chapter per day because each chapter is a night in October, but it was so enjoyable. I read almost the entire thing in an afternoon. So yeah, this is kind of like my Halloween read <laughs> a little early in the month. Um, I totally recommend this. This is probably the funniest thing I've read by Zelazny. Those are the nine things I read in the past two weeks. A bunch of really good stuff, especially in this past week. I am currently reading Hidden Figures by Margot Lee Shutterly, a nonfiction book about black female mathematicians at NASA beginning in the 30s or 40s. I am really enjoying this. I really like the subject matter, but I haven't felt like reading nonfiction this past week, so I've been pretty slow on it. Hopefully I will get back in the groove and just finish it this coming week because I think the whole thing is just going to be really, really good. I will also be reading more award winners this coming week. Green Mars, of course, because I got to get on that. And I have a couple of other things checked out from the library. So I will update you on what I'm currently reading and or what I have read, depending on how things go. And that's it. I need to go now because my neighbors are home and they're going to start screaming anytime now. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a fantastic weekend and then I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye.